everyone was talking about this one transition and honestly i had no idea how a comic book could be turned into a transition until i finally came across a page called gabbit effects i saw a video from him and was really amazed by his work so over the past few weeks i worked hard to recreate his transition and i finally figured it out in this video i'm going to show you exactly how you can use this cool looking comic book transition in your own edits so without wasting any more time let's jump right in first things first you obviously need some car clips to edit the clips i use are from one of the greatest videographers in the game you can download his clips for free using the link in the description i've already added my music to the timeline and this is the point where i want to begin my transition the first thing you need to do is to select your music and press l on your keyboard twice to reveal the waveform then start playing the track and add a marker for every beat you hear by the way you can add markers using the asterisk key on your keyboard Next you need to add some comic book frames to your timeline. These are actually these which I turned them into these. You can get these from the link in the description. Right click on the first layer and select pre-compose. Make sure the second option is enabled and click OK. Repeat this with other layers as well to turn all the frames into a separate composition. Now open one of the compositions and from here on the hardest part begins. Select one of your car videos and drag it onto the timeline. Place it beneath the comic book frame, then reposition it so it fits into one of the shapes of the comic panel. Then right click on the video, go to time and choose freeze frame. Finally select the pen tool and create a mask around the shape you chose so it fits perfectly. Now we need to repeat this process with the rest of the shapes so none of them are left empty. But you need to leave one of them empty and I'll tell you why. First open the main composition and go to the last frame of your first clip. Duplicate the first clip, then right click, go to time and choose freeze frame. Make sure the timing matches the last frame of your first clip. Select the freeze frame layer and press ctrl x to cut the layer. Then open the comic frame composition and press ctrl v to paste the video. Make sure it's placed beneath the comic frame layer. Reposition it so it fits into the empty shape and finally use the pen tool to create a mask around that shape. You're done with the first comic composition, now it's time to move on to the other compositions. Go back to the main composition, open another comic composition and repeat the process with it. You don't need to leave any empty space in this composition, just randomly place some videos. After you're done with that, go back to the main composition, open the last composition and repeat the process. But again, in this one, you'll need to leave one shape layer empty. Go back to the main comp and move to the first frame of the second clip. Duplicate the clip, then right click, go to time and choose freeze frame. Select this layer and press ctrl x to cut the layer. Then open the composition and press ctrl v to paste this layer. Now reposition it to the empty section. Don't forget to select the pen tool and create a mask around this shape as well. Then if you go back to the main comp, all the layers should be ready for the next steps. I highly recommend renaming these layers so you don't lose track of them later. Create a new null object and parent all of these layers to the null object. Also enable 3D on all of them. Select the null object and press P to reveal its position. Then if you change the Z value, you'll see that it creates a zoom out. Now select the layers and randomly reposition them to the top and bottom so they fill the entire screen. You can even duplicate the layers and reposition them to the right or left to create more space. Just make sure to reset the null object's position after you're done. Now find the composition that contains the last frame of the first clip and move it one frame backward. Press T on your keyboard to reveal the opacity, then decrease the opacity of that layer. Now start adjusting the position of the null object to align that layer with the last frame of your video. Then set the opacity back to 100 and move the video one frame forward to its original timing. Now duplicate this null object 5 more times. Then you'll need to parent this null object to that null object, this null object to that null object, this null object, that null object, this null object, that null object, and this null object, that null object. Select the first null object and press P on your keyboard to reveal its position and add a keyframe. Then move to the third marker and adjust the Z value to create the zoom out. Then select the second null object, add a keyframe for its position. Now move to the second marker, select the third null object and add a keyframe for its position and give it another movement. Then select the other null object, add a keyframe for its position and give it another movement. Finally, for the last movement, select the other null object and add a keyframe for its position. Move to the end of your transition, then bring your original video layer and decrease its opacity. Adjust the null object's position to make sure it matches the first frame of your second clip and then bring the video back to normal. Now select the keyframes of the first null object and press F9 to easy ease them. Then open the graph editor and create a curve like this. Do the same with the keyframes of the second null object, but this time create a curve like this. Apply the exact same graph to the other two null objects as well. And for the final null object, create a curve like this. Now if you play it back, you'll see that your transition is ready and it's time to make it perfect. First create a new solid layer. The color of the solid layer doesn't matter too much for now. Place the solid layer underneath all the other layers and make sure to trim it so it only appears during the transition. Then add S underscore halftone to the solid layer and adjust a few of its settings. First change the dot color from black to white 
then set the background color to a dark blue. Next you'll need to find these comic book vector artworks online or just download them using the link in the description. Drag one of them onto the timeline, enable 3D for the layer and parent it to the first null object. Then position it wherever you think it looks best. Then add another vector to the timeline, enable 3D and parent it to the null object and position it wherever you think it looks best. Now just repeat this process with all the vectors you have to give your transition a dynamic look. The next thing you should do is to press S on your keyboard to reveal the scale. Move 10 frames forward and add a keyframe for the scale. Then go back to the beginning and set the scale value to 0. Also if you want you can use the expression link in the pinned comment to give your motion a bouncy look. Simply hold Alt on your keyboard and click on the stopwatch to enable expressions, then paste the expression. Now to create the zoom out effect, first find the composition that contains the last frame of the first clip, then duplicate it and place it above your first video. Also duplicate your solid layer, place it beneath the composition, and trim both of these layers. Finally select these two layers and pre-compose them. Finally select the pen tool and create a mask around the shape that contains the last frame. Now duplicate the mask layer and set the duplicated layer's mask mode to subtract. Now click on toggle switches to reveal the track mat options and set the video's track mat to the original mask layer. Create a new null object and enable 3D on all of the layers. Then parent the compositions to the null object. Add the position keyframe to the null object and move it to the end. Then adjust the position so the comic frame is invisible at the beginning. Finally, easy ease the keyframes and adjust the graph to create a smooth curve like this. Now if you check it back, you see that your zoom out is ready. But don't forget to enable motion blur. For zooming back in, if you try to use the same method, you'll notice it doesn't work. Because you've made a lot of position adjustments. So instead of using that, I just go into composition and save the frame as a file. Make sure the format is set to PNG sequence and the resolution is on the full. Then simply drag and drop the saved frame into the After Effects. This time all you have to do is to select the pen tool and create a mask around the exact shape. Then set the mask mode to subtract and make sure the layer is placed above your clip. So again, create a new null object, enable 3D on both of the layers, then parent this layer to the null object. Then all you have to do is to add the position keyframes, move a few frames forward and zoom in until the comic frame is no longer visible. Don't forget to easy ease the keyframes and create a smooth curve like this. Your transition is now completely ready. It's time to get creative and add your favorite effects. First create a new adjustment layer and add CC vignette to the adjustment layer. Then adjust these values until you're satisfied. Then add the warp effect to the adjustment layer. Change the warp style to fish eye and decrease the bend value to 20. Then add keyframes to the amount and bend values so the effect doesn't appear or disappear suddenly. At the beginning, animate it from 0 to its original value. Don't forget to easy ease the keyframes and create a curve like this. And at the end, animate it from its original value to 0. The next thing you need to add is this. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but you can download it from the link in the description. Make sure to add opacity keyframes so it gradually appears and disappears after the transition. Now open one of the comic compositions, select the layer and apply the cartoon effect to it. You can now adjust the values until you're satisfied or simply just copy my settings. Then select the effect and press Ctrl C to copy it. Apply this effect to all the layers of every comic composition. Also to make it look more like a comic, I added some random colors to each individual shape. If you want to do the same, just open one of the compositions, create a new solid layer and change its color to something that fits the comic book style. Set the opacity of the solid layer to 15% and make sure it's beneath the comic frame. Then select the pen tool and start masking the section you want to fill with that color. And finally, just set the layer mode to multiply. Next, duplicate the solid layer, press M on your keyboard and delete the mask. Then go to layer, solid settings and change its color to something else. And repeat the masking process with another shape. And now, if you just check it back, you see that you have a cool looking comic book transition. Alright, I guess that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I really hope I was able to help you out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. And as always, never forget to subscribe to Adobe Simplified. See you in the next one. Bye.